right, everyone, we are back with week five of our The Dream of You online Bible study. Joe, we are excited to hear from you once again. Uh, Prior to this call with you, Joe, um, as we were preparing for these audio teachings, you mentioned that you also enjoy, you you enjoy snacks, which we learned Mm -hmm. about you. Um, You also are a lover of Target, which is a store here, um, mainly in uh, the U.S., North America, but we love Target as well. Do you like to just walk around when you're at Target? Is there a list that you base your shopping off of, or how do you go about shopping at Target? I'm very interested to know. You know, there are all kinds of ways to shop at Target (laughs) because I see Target a bit like a village. For those of us who think of the store in your community, which is like a village, you go there and you just see what happens. That's the Target experience. (laughs) And so, yes, I have a list, but some days I just want to kind of hang out. When my kids were young, we used to live in Arizona. And those of us who, if if you're used to living in a hot place, so dry heat. And when we say dry heat, just imagine walking in a hairdryer day in, day out, <laughs> just, or, or an oven, take or, your pick, take your either pick, of yeah. those, <laughs> either of those is, will will pretty much wrap it up for you. So I would say to the kids, Hey, let's do a play date with Target. <laughs> and we, there you and go. We, we just go there together and hang. And, um, I've, I've made friends with people because <laughs> who we met at Target <laughs> just so because good. we would, we would all be there at the same time. So I do like to have a list but I, I just don't feel it's right to be restricted by that list. You can be open to other things that are there. I, I That's how I would. My husband it. says all marketing companies love me because I um, love the end caps. And so yeah. I don't know I need it until I see it. And we always have to figure out if I really need what's on the end cap, which is being marketed most heavily to you as you walk up and down the yeah. aisles or not. So I relate to Target runs. I relate to shopping runs, all the things. So. That's fun. I'm glad. I'm glad you have a list, but you hold hold loosely to it. Hold like loosely. That. Very relatable. Mm-hmm. All right. So as we get into this week's audio teaching, we're in week five. We're covering chapters nine and ten of the Dream of You. But Joe, you always bring a wonderful word, so we're excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Um, I was thinking that sometimes the beginning of a journey is really challenging, and the end of a journey can be really exhausting. But what can be also agonizing really is the middle. <laughs> I, I like long distance running. Um, oh, fun and uh, it's just one of those, one of those things. And, um, when I've, I've done a couple of half marathons over the years, I don't know if I'll do them again because also snacking is easier, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, there's, there's a mile, mile 11 was always the one that would really get to me because you're too far gone to go back and just say, I'm calling it a day. And also 11's an odd number. So why do you say you've done 11? You've just got to finish the thing. (laughs) But your body at that point is like, why are you doing this? This is terrible. This was a terrible idea. The sweat is telling you, your muscles are telling you, your feet are telling you, your now grumbling stomach is telling you, you shouldn't have done this. The middle is hard. The middle is hard. And and so I guess my thoughts for today are for those of us who who are just in the middle, you know, you, you, you can't see where you started, but you can't quite see where you're going either. And you're wondering if it's worth it. Um, and you're processing and working things through. And, and maybe, maybe it's just working through an area of your identity, or maybe it's just your circumstances right now are just like, oh, I, I'm not saying I'm bored and it's mundane. It's just that everything's the same and it's been that way for a long time now. Yeah. Um, how do you handle the middle? I, one of the things I'm struck by with Jesus is how he meets people in the middle, mm. in the middle of the everyday, the mundane. It's just, this is how it is. And I don't know when it gets to stop middle. Yeah. The, I, I don't know if it, I, I'm kind of used to it being like this. So it's almost become my identity now middle. Mm. It's I'm exhausted, but I don't know if I get to stop being exhausted. So do I call it exhausted anymore? Or just do, do I call it normal middle? Mm. And the words I want to, Um, read to you are very familiar, um, very familiar verses, a a very familiar verse. But when I, they're they're a verse for me, which when I imagine them, they feel like ice cold water on a desert day. Um, Refreshing, um, enlivening words. And let me set the scene for them. Jesus breaks into the scene for people who have waited for a Messiah, waited for a break in of the kingdom of God for generations. They are in the middle. They know where they've been, but they can't see it. They don't know. They know where they're ultimately going, but they can't see it. They're just in the middle. 
of existing and they had a framework of how to live. Um, but their framework of 10 commandments have now morphed into over 600 rules. So basically the middle is dry and it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. 600 it's rules. Woo. 600 rules. <laughs> no refreshment there, friends. No <laughs> refreshment. Just a gazillion ways to get something wrong. Right. And people around you to tell you that you did it. It's not refreshing. And into that se- setting, into that middle, Jesus says this, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I'll give you rest. And he goes on to say, take my yoke upon me, take my, my yoke upon you and learn from me. And he goes on from there. But I just even want to stop at the phrase, come to me mm. in the middle. When you are trying to work things through, trying to be a really faithful Christian woman, trying to work through your stuff, are you still coming to Jesus? Or did you somehow tag him and expect that you were meant to finish this off on your own? Mm. Are you weary of the journey? And embarrassed to say so, say, God, I know we're working through stuff, but it's just hard following you. Yeah. It's hard saying no to all my temptations. It's really hard saying no to all my vices. It's saying hard, it's really hard saying no to all my weaknesses and to the things that I know are wrong, but honestly, they're easier. Are you carrying heavy burdens? Are you carrying the burdens of stories that didn't start with you, but really crashed into your landscape? Are you feeling like the exhaustion will never end? I simply want to remind you that Jesus's first words to you are come, come to me. Bring the weariness to him. Bring the tiredness, the frustration, bring the middle to him. Bring the heavy burdens to him because he promises rest in this journey. He promised it then when he said these words to the, for the first time to these his people, God's people who were wearied by rules that they could never attain. He said it to every person he met, every person who came to him, he ministered to in some way or another. And he wants to minister to you by, by his word now. Will you come to him or will you carry the burden of this journey alone? Will you come to him or will you weary yourself and to the point where it's just easier say, to say yes to things that you've been saying no to for a long time now? Jesus doesn't accuse you here. Jesus doesn't condemn you here. He invites you to him here and says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. And he doesn't say, I'm going to teach you really hard things. (laughs) He doesn't say, I'm going to make you feel bad about all the things you're feeling. He says, I'll give you rest. The invitation's there for each and every one of you today, friends. Come to Jesus. As you were talking, Joe, I thought of, very distinct people who maybe signed up for the study. I thought about the college age gal that's working through classes and trying to figure mm. out how to manage um, manage working and classes and all yeah. the things. Then I think of the mom going from one activity activity to the next, and then maybe even the businesswoman or CEO who's approving budgets and approving processes mm-hmm. and just all the things that are that fill up our plates and fill up our to do lists and just finding the space or the breath of fresh air. When you said. Mm come to me, right? Just that invitation invitation yeah. of just laying it down at his feet, even though it's hard and it requires us to create space to do that. Yeah. Um, just the benefit that comes from it, that Jesus is, is inviting us into that space. And so, um, Joe, I would love, as we have one more week with you next week, um, mm-hmm. you talked about the middle and just how hard the middle is. I would love if you could close out today in prayer for that middle space yeah. that is so hard. Yeah, let's pray together. Father God, I want to thank you that you do see us, that you are for us, that you do understand us, that you do fight for us. And I pray for every single friend, every single sister here in the middle, wondering when things change, wondering how long this lasts. And I ask for grace upon grace upon grace. Lord, I pray you'd send a friend, you send a word of encouragement, Lord, I pray you'd bring your word alive to them, that you'd bring them comfort in the midst of the dryness and the hardness, comfort in the midst of the storm. Lord, I pray for hope where there's hopelessness. I pray for beauty where there's despair. And Lord, I pray for each of my sisters that they would know that they don't have to perform their way to you. They don't have to do this right for you, that you keep on saying, come to me because you want to meet all of their needs. I thank you for who you are, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. Joe, thank you so much. Everyone, we will be back with you next week for our last audio teaching, and we look forward to that. So everyone, we have a saying around here, when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. And we believe that, Proverbs 31. So have a great week, everyone. We'll be back next week.